Fantastic way to start worship. Certainly gives me a picture of those three kings. And we're going to think about the three kings in just a few moments' time. Going to pray first, and then I'm going to bring you the Bible reading that covers the three kings. But let's pray together first. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, as we meet together in this way, it reminds us very much that we're still in the midst of times of difficulties. Uh, I know that there are people who are met here with us this morning who are very far from well. And we pray your healing mercy upon those people and so many that we're in contact with. We recognise that things have changed from where we were at a year ago, but still things are very uncertain. And so we seek your guidance, your wisdom, your direction on how we should move forward in these difficult times. But we thank you. You are a God who loves us. You are a God who heals. And so we certainly pray your healing mercies on each and every one of us who has those problems at the moment. We thank you that we have had a good Christmas and we reach this time of epiphany, a time of revelation and looking forward to new things. And at the start of the year, that's exactly what we want to do. We want to look forward to a year of good things. But may it be a year when we are led and guided and directed fully by you. So be with us, Lord, as we look at your word and we consider what you have to say to us this morning. May it be something that is useful to us. As we move into this year, we ask that you go with us every moment, every step of the way. And Lord, we just ask that you be with us now. We know that you promise when we meet together in your name, you are with us. And although we are separated by distance, we're still met together in the same spirit. And so may your Holy Spirit bless this time together this morning. Amen. As I say, I'm going to uh, share the Bible reading with you. And it's the Bible reading I think you'll probably expect on the Epiphany Sunday. It's Mark, uh, Matthew chapter 2. And I'm reading the first 12 verses. Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the reign of King Herod. About that time, some wise men from eastern lands arrived in Jerusalem asking, where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star as it rose and we have come to worship him. King Herod was deeply disturbed when he heard this as was everyone in Jerusalem. He called a meeting of the leading priests and teachers of religious law and asked, where is the Messiah supposed to be born? In Bethlehem, in Judea, they said, for this is what the prophet wrote. And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not least among the ruling cities of Judah, for a ruler will come from you who will be the shepherd for my people Israel. Then Herod called for a private meeting with the wise men, and he learned from them the time when the star first appeared. Then he told them, go to Bethlehem and search carefully for the child. And when you find him, come back and tell me so that I can go and worship him too. After this interview, the wise men went, th went their way, and the star they had seen in the east guided them to Bethlehem, and it went ahead of them and stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were filled with joy. They entered the house and saw the child with his mother, Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasure chests and gave him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. When it was time to leave, they returned to their own country by another route, for God had warned them in a dream not to return to Herod. We're going to sing a carol that talks very much of the journey that the wise men made. Uh, it's as with gladness, men of old did a shining star behold. We've got that picture of the wise men heading towards the baby Jesus. So you may want to sing the words there on the screen. I just warn you, this version that I've got for us today doesn't take any prisoners. There's no gaps between the verses. So it's easy to sing along to, but you're going to need big breaths and 
try and get everything in. So as with gladness, men of old. Stay that way, but it's strange men and their bears rummage around. You're not sharing the words, Neil. Tim tells me it's not showing the words, so we'll have another go at that as well. I do apologise. So we've got the picture of the wise men heading towards the baby Jesus. This Sunday marks the, offend, the, the end of the Christmas season as far as the church, as far as the Salvation Army is concerned, and the beginning of the season of Epiphany. And Epiphany is defined in the dictionary as a sudden and great revelation or realisation. That's what the wise men were to get. This is the day that we celebrate the journey of the wise men to seek the Messiah and find him. And what a journey it was. Strangely, God chose pagan astrologers to be among the first visitors 
to the baby Jesus. It was an occupation expressly forbidden in the Jewish law. Modern day equivalent would be the people who read and interpret horoscopes. And yet they were welcomed, their gifts were received, and they recognized the Messiah. But they almost didn't make it home alive. They crossed paths with and disobeyed one of the most awful kings of the time. One of the most striking elements of the Christmas story is the imperfection of any kind of human standards. None of the circumstances that surrounded Jesus' birth were ideal. Mary's baby was born out of wedlock. When the time for the delivery came, Mary and Joseph were on the road due to political forces beyond their control. There wasn't a good place to have the baby. So they ended up sharing this most wonderful event with the livestock in the place where the animals fed. And the king wanted the baby dead. And beyond all these imperfections, other factors were just bleak. Jesus was born into a time, as I say, of political and religious upheaval. Herod was insecure and violent. And he was in power at a time which created a dangerous environment for anyone who he didn't like. The wise men, for all their wisdom, weren't as clever as we might expect a wise man to be. They were following the star over the place where the baby lay. And yet, they didn't end up in the place where the baby lay. They ended up in Jerusalem. And then they became more of a hindrance than a gift. It was them that brought Herod's forces down upon all the children in the Holy Land. Herod went into a jealous rage and caused the slaughter of the innocents, the murder of all the male children two years and under. It was definitely dangerous times. And none of the major players in the Christmas story had any control over any of it. It seemed a totally inauspicious time for God to become man. But Jesus was born. And the wise men left their home country and traveled through these dangerous territories to seek the one who offered them hope. They were willing to leave all that was safe and familiar in order to find this Messiah this deep spiritual thing which everybody was searching for. If we've been awake during this season, we might sense ourselves being invited on a new journey of our own, a journey that involves us leaving the familiar territory to seek something new, something special, something different in God's presence. The journey of the Magi was a dangerous one that put all the characters in the Christmas story at risk. But those who fared best in the unfolding Christmas story were those who responded immediately to whatever guidance they received, whether prophecy, stars, angels, scriptures or whatever. In order to be part of what God was doing, Mary, Joseph, Zechariah, Elizabeth, the shepherds, the wise men, all responded to however God spoke to them. And that's the journey that we need to be prepared to go on in 2022. The journey of learning how to be responsive to what God wants of us. Like those wise travellers who bumbled along imperfectly, until they finally arrived at the place where the presence of God was being revealed to them. We need to be prepared to seek, to follow, to find, and to worship. 
I prepared, prepared that as the sermon and felt there was something more that I needed to say. And I didn't know what it was. And then a couple of days ago, someone bought me something really profound, which I will share with you in a few moments time. But we're going to sing another song first. We're going to sing Angels from the Realms of Glory. And the angels are the one people, one uh, group that I've not mentioned in that little thought so far. But the angels sung and worship to God. So let's sing and worship God as we sing this carol together. A wonderful carol and it reminds us not only of the Christmas story of people coming to worship that baby in the manger but it gives us that picture of why the baby in the manger came to save us from our sins our coming to worship indicates that we have received the salvation that Jesus offers us what a wonderful thing came from Christmas. As I say, I wrote that uh, short thought that I shared just now, and I really felt there was something else I wanted to say and wasn't quite sure what it was. And then on Boxing Day, we got the news that Desmond Tutu had died. Uh, Archbishop Desmond Tutu from Soweto, a uh, wonderful man of God, and uh, he died, I think, age 90 on Boxing Day. And on Thursday, I read an article that had been written 20 years ago by Giles Brandreth, talking about a meeting that he had had with Desmond Tutu. 
The description that Giles gives of the ending of that meeting is absolutely marvellous. It reminded me that the kings we thought of today would have been rejected by many modern Christians because of their lifestyle, because of the way that they lived. They were astrologers, yet they recognised Jesus as God. They worshipped him and they would have received that salvation. I think of the thief who died at the side of Jesus at the crucifixion. He recognised Jesus as God and was promised that he would be with Jesus in heaven. I think a massive part of today's epiphany, that moment of sudden and great revelation or realisation, is that everything changes when we see God for who he really is, and especially when we see him in Jesus. So many people who are looked at and judged because of their lifestyle, their friendships, their relationships, their background, their gender, their race, they are put into a difficult situation, but they needn't be. And these are the words from Desmond Tutu that I want to share. So this is uh, Giles Brander writing about his meeting with Desmond Tutu. As the Archbishop had finished his homily, but so, sorry, the Archbishop had finished his homily, but somehow he can sense that I'm not wholly satisfied. He smiles. He recognises a lapsed Anglican when he sees one. He leans towards me one last time and in a voice barely above a whisper says, you are like so many, my friend. You have everything, but inside you feel there is something missing. Deep down, somewhere, it's not quite okay. Do not worry. Do not feel troubled. Do not be perplexed. God loves you as you are, with your doubts, with your intellectual reservations, with your inability to make the leap of faith. God says, I made you actually, and I made you as you are because I love you. Don't try to titivate yourself. Just be you and know that I affirm you. You are precious. You matter enormously to me. You matter as if you were the only human being and you know something. He pauses for a moment and smiles a wonderful smile. I create only masterpieces. I have no doubt at all about your worth. You don't have to do anything. Your worth for me is intrinsic. Please believe I love you. You are not going to find ultimate satisfaction in anything out there because I made you like me. As St. Augustine says, thou hast made us for thyself and our hearts are restless until they find their rest in thee. I made you for a worshipping creature and you have worshipped money and fame, I know it, but ultimately I am the only one worth worshipping. I won't let you go, my child. I won't give up on you ever. I won't. I will sit here like the father of the prodigal son, waiting. Come back home. Come back home to me and our celebration will be mind-boggling. What wonderful words they were. Coming to Jesus is coming home. The wise men did it when they worshipped. The shepherds did it when they worshipped. The angels did it as they worshipped. And we can do it, whatever our past or our current state. Our epiphany, our recognising or realising this wonderful new thing, is that in coming to Jesus in worship, we are saved. The wise men went to Jerusalem. They went to the temple of Herod and asked, where is the baby to be born? 
so that we can go and worship. And we do the same. They needed to know how to get to Bethlehem. How far is it to Bethlehem? And so our last carol for this Christmas season is going to ask that same question. How far is it to Bethlehem? Can we go and worship that baby? Yes, we can. Make this a song of worship as we sing our last carol together. Let's pray together. Dear loving Heavenly Father, our heart's desire is to know you, to love you, to worship you, to know your salvation. And we find all that when we seek you, when we follow you, when we live with you. And so, Lord, as we approach this new year, once again, we ask that everything we do will be done, led and guided and with you. Lord, I thank you that we've been able to meet together in this way as we prepare to once again meet together physically. I just ask once more guidance and wisdom. But I now pray for each of my friends here and those who've not been able to join us this morning, that this year, 2022, will be a year full of your blessing. Lord, we don't know what the year holds, but we know we go into it holding on to you. And Lord, that's enough for us for the moment. So be with us, 
and bless us now and always, Lord. Amen. We're going to sing one more song to finish our time together. As I said, we've just sang our last Christmas carol for the season, but we're going to sing uh, another song, which I think really sets us up for this year together. We're going to sing moment by moment that we live with God every moment, moment by moment. So let's share this one more song together to complete our worship. as a benediction let's share together these words that you know so well I've used them so often and I have no problem with sharing them one more time we're going to just share the words of the last verse of away in a manger be near me Lord Jesus I ask thee to stay close by me forever and love me I pray bless all the dear children in thy tender care 